after the glue has dried overnight on your box top, your lid, it's time to take it out of the clamps, put the clamps away, and our next operation is to plane all this down to make it nice and smooth. Okay, so we haven't used the planer since the cutting board uh, project, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, I'm going to do this to your board. So I got lines kind of all over the entire surface. I'll do the same thing on the back side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through the planer. I'll operate the planer and you will assist me. You can stand on the other side of the planer and grab the board as it comes out, inspect it, and if it needs more planing, um, give it back to me. So when I say inspect it, what we want to do is get rid of all these pencil marks. Once all the pencil marks are gone, we know that the board is uh, flat and smooth. So step five is going to be surface plane. We're going to use the planer and I'm going to say teacher to operate. This is not something that you're going to do on your own. So let me plane the board and I'll show you what it looks like when it's nice and smooth. Well, that looks a lot nicer, nice and smooth. You know the next step. What we need to do is we need to square the ends. We want to take off as little as possible, just enough to clean up this end and make some 90 degree, nice 90 degree corners. All right? So this tool right here is another type of square, a framing square or a rafter square. We used it on our cutting boards. So I know how much I need to cut off. So this step here, step six is to square the ends. We're going to use the miter saw and I'm going to say a sliver cut. We're taking off as little as possible and we're going to do that to both ends. We're going to do that two times. All right, well I switched boards on you, but uh, here's a top. It's all squared up. Our next step, what we need to do is we need to adjust the width. So, the width, we need to know how wide the box is. So we're gonna grab the box, we're gonna take a really accurate measurement. Because we're gonna take a really ac accurate measurement, I was gonna use a ruler. And my box is eight and an eighth inches wide. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure the top is an extra eighth of an inch. So what I've got is I've got eight and an eighth plus another eighth, that's eight and a quarter. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna measure out eight and a quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a little mark there. All right, and then I'm gonna compare it to my box. Before I cut it, I just wanna make sure that it's going to be the right size. So this is a crazy angle that we're looking at here, but you can see that was my pencil mark. I've got the, the top in the box kind of tipped up on its side, right? And now you can see that this top is going to be a little bit bigger than the box. What happens, it gives us just a little bit of area to hook your fingers onto to open up the box. So my top, I want it to be eight and an eighth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the table saw. I'm gonna set the fence, sorry, my top. I want it to be eight and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the table saw. I'm gonna set the fence to eight and a quarter. Everybody's is going to be different, right? Depending on how well you laid out the miters, how well you cut the miters, your, everybody's box might be a little bit different. So I know I'm gonna cut mine at eight and a quarter on the table saw, and that's a rip cut. All right, so step seven is to rip to width. We're gonna use the table saw. You're gonna go one eighth inch wider than the box. Now what we need to do is we need to cut to length or finish to length. So again, 
we need to figure out how long are the boxes. So what we need to do, we need a really accurate measurement on how long your box is. Again, everybody's box is probably gonna be a little bit different. I got lucky here. My box is pretty much right on 11 inches. Just so let me show you what's gonna happen. Here's my top. What's gonna happen? We're gonna attach one of your brackets. The box would slide up here. And then we want another bracket. But this bracket that goes underneath here, sorry you can't see this. Let's try it this way. There's a better view. So you can see here, here's the top. You can see how it overhangs the box. I've got my bracket here. I've got a bracket over here. Okay, this is three quarters of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch. So really, three quarters plus three quarters is an inch and a half. Right now, we're talking the length of the box plus this plus this. And then what we need to do is we need to add a little extra space in here. We need some space so that the top can open up smoothly and not rub on the box. So here's the answer. We're going to measure the box. 11. And then we're going to add an inch and 5 eighths to the measurement. So 11 plus an inch and 5 eighths. Again, we're going to take the square. We're going to lay out that line. All right, and keep in mind, I want to put the saw blade next to the line. I want to just barely just take away a little of that pencil mark. I would like to see a little pencil mark left, and I'd like to see a little pencil mark uh, as sawdust. All right, so that is step eight. Finish to length on the miter saw. So we're going to say it's going to be one and five eighths longer than box. So we'll go ahead and we'll take care of that on the miter saw. All right, so I've cut the finish to length. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to glue our brackets on. Before we glue the br brackets on though, uh, we need to do some sanding. Anytime you use that surface planer, it puts some bumps in there. I kind of highlight there's a big bump here, there's a bump here. Plus I can see all kinds of little, little tiny lines from the surface planer. So step nine, what we want to do is we do some RMF sanding. So step nine, RMF sand. All right, we're going 80, 120, 220. Uh, this is not to say that we uh, are done sanding. We'll probably have to come back and do some more sanding. But before we glue the brackets on, let's go ahead and do step nine, rough, medium, and fine sand. All right, the top is all sanded up. What we want to do now is we want to attach our brackets right onto there. Here's some advice for the brackets. This is a very crucial step. It's an easy step, but it's a crucial step. So what we need to do is we need to attach these brackets. This is definitely a two-person job. Okay, Don't rush this. Take your time. Make sure we do it right. So first of all, here's the bracket. We're gonna, the, the bracket, we're going to glue this so that it's flush to this. So right, that right there, like that is not flush. This, when it's just perfect like that, is flush. So honestly, um, 
your fingers can feel flushness better than your eyes can judge it, right? So um, whoever is holding this for you, when you go to clamp this thing together, all right, feel it. Make sure it's lined up so it's flush here. And then the next thing is in the back. What we want is we want to be nice and flush back here. So meaning this is the back edge of the top is going to be nice and lined up flush with this. Now, when we do this, there is a complete potential that the front might be too long. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to exaggerate it. The front might be too long. That's okay. We can always sand that down later and take care of that. What we want to make sure though is that when we do this, that the back is lined up nice. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to show you a little bit of glue will go a long ways. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and glue my bracket up. And I always like to do this. I don't like those big globs of glue. Alright, because it's hard to tell for me if you have the right amount of glue on. So what we want is a nice, thin, light coating. What I'm trying to avoid is glue squeezing out all over the place. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that on there. All right, and then I'm going to have my helper um, clamp that down. So we're going to use quick clamps to clamp that down. So um, let me show you the results. Okay, here you go. So here are my clamps, uh, sorry, my brackets all clamped on. I've got three on each side. I think that's necessary. This is not overkill. So we've got the quick clamps on there. Um, it's nice and flush in the back, flush in the back. And by the way, right, here's the hump. Here's the hump. The two humps have to be kind of lined up towards the back. And the only thing I want to point out right now is I've got some squeeze out. I've got glue squeeze out right there. That's going to be impossible to sand. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get a wet paper towel and I wipe that up before it dries. All right, that's enough for this step. Look forward to taking these clamps off.